Hi everyone, this is Dollar. Today we're going to do a review of the iRobot i3 Plus by Roomba with self-empty. About two and a half years ago, I did a review of the Shark IQ with self-empty, and you can see that above. But today, let's check out the iRobot i3 Plus. Here's where we park the Shark IQ. It's underneath the desk in our hallway. Um, originally we set it up in the laundry room but kind of got it in the way there and uh, so this is more out of the way spot. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the new iRobot in this same location. So first I'm going to pull out the Shark IQ. Now the Shark IQ has been running pretty much two three times a week for the last two and a half years so it's been pretty good. Now recently the wheels got clogged up probably with pet hair over the years um, so i am going to pull that apart and try to get that running again but i thought this was a great opportunity to try something new this location also is close to our wi-fi access point so you want to make sure you're near wi-fi access the so first thing you want to do is just plug this in now we're going to plug it in underneath here. So we got it plugged in and we're going to slide it back here in a second. But I do have to, because it's under a desk, I do have to pull it out to empty the bin. The bin is here and we'll get into that a little bit more later. There is a spool, if you will, or something to wrap the cord on, because you really don't want the excess cord hanging out, so it might, doesn't get in the way of the vacuum as it comes and goes. But because I have to pull this out to maintain it and clean it, I'm going to leave it off of there, but I'll just make sure it's stuffed in the back so that it doesn't get cut up as it comes and goes. Here's the robot itself, the vacuum. It's pretty simple in design. Not a lot to it. There's a home button, a clean button, and I said what might be a power button or something. I'll check that later. But it's very simple. Uh, it has what I thought was originally cloth around here, but it's more of a textured vinyl, which is probably a lot better. But um, what we want to do now, there's two metal contacts right here, and we want to back this up onto the docking station until it makes contact and wakes up you will start the charging process. This may take a few minutes and it'll make a sound when it's ready to go. So it's woke up. When I said it was ready to go, it just means it's ready to start charging so it's awake. Now let's set up the Wi-Fi. Okay, what you want to do now is just go to the App Store and download iRobot Home. So we're going to go ahead and open the app. And it's asking if you want notifications. I'm going to allow that so I can know what's happening remotely. So we're going to need to sign up for an account. So go ahead and enter the, your information um, for your account and create an account. Once you created your account, it's going to send a code to your email address. Enter that code and it's going to ask you to connect to your local network access. It's going to hit continue here. It's going to want to connect to your local network, so I'm going to allow it to. And it's going to ask you to add your product to the list.
Enter the name of your network and your password. So once you push both buttons at the same time, it's going to search for your product. It's going to ask you to join the network. And you can connect your robot to your phone. So it's asking us to go to the phone settings, go to Wi-Fi and pick the network that starts with iRobot, then come back to this app. So let's try that. The Roomba is selected. Okay, no internet connection. So let's try that again. So I'm going to go back and reselect my uh, the Roomba from my Wi-Fi, but it still is unable to connect. So I'm going to go back to the Roomba app, and I see the robot on there now. So it says connected to the Roomba. So go back and select setup. And then it's going to go through the process. And now I see my actual Wi-Fi name on there. So that's at least it's recognizing it. So enter your password for your Wi-Fi at this point. And then it'll go through a series of connection. Once it's connected, it's going to ask you if you want to join the Roomba network. And then you'll see a process where it's going to actually go through and connect the Wi-Fi, verify your password, etc. And that's let you know you're on the right track now. Okay, I found my password. That's going to connect to the cloud. And we're connected. Your robot is fully set up and ready to go. Press clean to get to work. I named the product Roomba. I'm just going to use the default. Once you say continue, it's going to show you a series of little videos, if you will, uh, of how the machine works. Talking about how you set up, and we've already gone through a lot of this. And it says, this is the app, so it's just telling you to tap on the app. You can start cleaning. Or you can hit the clean button on top of the Roomba. So I pushed the uh, start now button on the app and it started going. So while it's running, I'm just going to go through the app really quick with you. I'm not going into a lot of detail, but show you some of the features of the app. It tells me right now that it's been running for one minute, actually two minutes now, that it's moving. You can pause it here. Um, you can also set up rooms where it can vacuum. Right now it's set for vet vacuum everywhere. You can schedule the time that you want it to vacuum you know, set the time the days etc uh, the name of the vacuum is on there it also has a history of what it's done in the past and also product health i uh, sense it's just starting out, it's going to give me um, the health later on, is what it's stating. But it'll have the history of the health. Maybe we'll look at that later. So let's go ahead and create a schedule. We're going to hit schedule. It just says create a schedule. <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to set it up for Monday and Thursdays. And have it start at 9 o'clock a.m. is fine. And the Roomba down there that you see is just the name of the vacuum because I accepted the default name. So and to, to schedule it. Now I have a schedule showing. The do not disturb means it won't run in case if you have an event or something or people are over and you don't want it to run, uh, it'll pause and not run. 
So that's how you schedule. It's very simple to schedule. Okay, it shows you it's vacuuming, and if I wanted it to return home to the docking station, just pause it. It'll say pause, I'm gonna say hit send home. And it'll send it back to docking station, empty its bin, and recharge. Okay, now we're gonna map the house. Up in the upper right is a little map icon. Just hit that and create a new start smart map. It's on the charging station and say next. Pick up all the obstacles and start mapping. So we'll let it run until it's done. Come back. It's finished mapping out the house. So now we're going to go back to the Maps tab, click on New Map, and it's going to show you the layout for my house, or your house in this case. Uh, this is the layout for my house, and it says Unlabeled Room. So that's what we want to set up uh, room dividers and name the rooms. But first, we're gonna, it's going to ask you if you want to name the map. So I won't say new map, just say uh, main floor. That's what I'm going to call it, even though I only have one floor. So select main floor. And then you're going to see um, an area where it's going to help you get your orientation. So go ahead and look at the map and make sure the orientation is where you're comfortable with. And this is my house, everything looks like the orientation is correct, so I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to just flip it over to let you see how that works. So the circle over around the dot rotates it around. Once you have what you want, you can go ahead and save it. The next thing we want to do is set up the room dividers. So select got it and you get back, return back to the map. And all the green lines are the what they're calling room dividers. And I have an open concept floor in a lot of the areas, and it will assume certain areas. So you can, you can adjust those as you want. In this case, the two upper rooms are a kitchen and family room, and it does automatically put the room divider there, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Even though the room dividers were pretty close, they're not exactly right. So I'm gonna make some adjustments. So you're, you can scroll the map to align with the room divider, and then you can just use your fingers to rotate the room divider to give it a, an alignment with the edge of the room. My plan had a lot of dividers that I didn't need. There's like four or five too many. So select the divider you don't want, and hit the garbage can at the bottom of the screen, and it'll delete it. Every time you make an action, either move it or delete it, it'll save. So after you finish the room dividers, you want to name the rooms. And I recommend you do the room dividers first, because I had to go back and rename a lot of the rooms once I deleted some of the dividers that were there before. So once you pick a room, it'll turn green, and you just use the uh, pull-down menu and select the room that you want. Like in this case, it's the breakfast room. And there's several on there, but you cannot repeat a room name, like you can't have two hallways. In this case, we're selecting the kitchen. When you finish naming the rooms, just it'll save and you just go back to the main menu of the app. The favorites option is you can set up a time duration. This one I have a full 45 minutes. You can set it to different time intervals. And what this is for is you can link it to Siri or I believe Alexa and other devices like that. And just say, in this case I call it full, so Siri clean full or clean short and it'll go for 45 minutes or 15 minutes. So that's all the favorites is and you can color code it as well. I wanted to get back to the home button and this button here. Let me see, it's just a circle. 
You got a home button here. What that is for when you're trying to connect to the internet, you basically hold both of those buttons down at the same time. Otherwise, I haven't seen another use for that. And this is, of course, the clean button. You need to hit it twice to clean. Even though this has a self-cleaning bin that sucks the debris out, on occasion you do have to clean the cartridge out, especially if you have pets. Just basically just push the button here and it swings out. And you just empty that out. Um, also note, right here is a filter. So this filter just slides out and it does come with a spare. You can also order spare filters and dust bags online. Okay. So put it back in, you just put this little hingy part in there, slide it until it clicks. I want to cover the dustbin. This is where the vacuum pulls up into and it sucks the dirt out of it. You can see that. So all you do is pull up on this and pull the dustbin out. What it does is when you pull up, this is the hole that fills it up. You can see a little puff of dust come out of there. But when you pull it up, it actually closes that and seals it. You can discard it. When you put the new one in, you want to slide these rails into the slot here. You can see the slots right there and right there. Just slide those in. You can see a little dust squirting out because it's in the open position. And it slides in there. And when this closes, it locks it in place. That's all there is to it. I'm going to do a quick summary of the things that I've noticed. Um, first of all, a couple of the quirky things. It doesn't always charge when docked. Even though it's docked, when I tell it to go out, it says the battery is either low or dead on occasion. It doesn't do it every time, but sometimes. Um, it does work well with the timer sequence that it does. It goes out on Mondays and Thursdays and comes back pretty routinely and does well with that. It also seems to have intermittent internet connection loss. Sometimes I have to turn it on or move it so that it activates something to get recognized and some I have had to reconnect at one time and reset up the internet connection on it once. But ever since then it's just a matter of you know, there's a flashing light and I want to see what it is and it's unable to find it. I have to kind of touch the unit and make it respond and then it seems to connect. Again, I don't think it, you should have to do that. The other thing I noticed that the mapping, even though I love the mapping feature, it took two tries to get it to work and, and to its defense, it might have been my fault the first time that I didn't go through it all the connections properly. Uh, the second time it did connect and it took um, probably, I think I said about two hours to go through and map the house. And now I have that feature on there. It is kind of loud. Uh, the shark IQ wasn't as noticeable when I'm working and it comes by the door to the bedroom. It is pretty loud. I do have to close the door if I'm in a meeting or something. It uh, does clean well. I, I, I got both of these. I actually have to clean up pet hair off the floor. So running on Tuesday, Mondays and Thursdays seems to keep it pretty clean. And um, I like that. You do have to clean the hair out of the front wheel, the one that kind of free floats, um, just to make sure it spins freely. But it's very easy to do. It snaps right out and can be fixed easily. It finds its way home to dock. Um, fine even though it's in a kind of a remote location i haven't had any issues with it not docking uh, there are many useful features in the app that make it more usable would i recommend it yes for the price i paid i did get it on amazon day with a decent discount about 350 dollars, i believe i got the shark iq on amazon day too a couple two three years ago now or two and a half years ago i think it was um with a good discount. So it is comparable to Shark IQ, but the Shark IQ, once it got set up, it didn't have the connection issues with the internet. Overall, it does what it's supposed to do, and I would re recommend this robot vacuum. 
once I get the Shark IQ's wheel unstuck, maybe I'll do a more in-depth comparison for y'all. So thank you for watching. and Let me know if you have anything else you'd like to see. And uh, if you could, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. Thank you.